Hi everyone and welcome to our webinar on managing your tool assets with barcodes and RFID. My name is Lorna Malia and I am the marketing manager here at Barcodes. Today, Arnie Hetzel, Director of Sales and Marketing at Gigatrack, as well as Christy Bemis, Sales Lead at Gigatrack, are going to discuss how easily managing your tool inventory can help you reduce operating costs as well as protect your invest investment. We do have a Q&A feature available on this webinar, so please feel free to write down any questions and we'll address those towards the end uh, as time allows. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Arnie. Arnie, it's all yours. Hey, thanks very much. Um, one of the questions we get asked a lot is what is tool tracking? Um, let me say first that um, I grew up in the electrical contracting world. I understand process controls, electrical contracting, and most of the things that a typical contractor faces on a day-to-day -day basis. Many people are familiar with asset tracking. There are a lot of asset tracking solutions in the market. In a business environment, assets are typically things like desks, chairs, PCs, and it's very common to manage them with an asset tracking solution. So what is tool tracking? The processes are pretty similar, but the items tracked and the landscape that they're tracked in are often very Tool tracking is the management of an asset used to generally build something, maintain something, or repair a process. So a little bit different. And what are typical tools that would be tracked in the solution? Generally, there are things like hand tools, power tools, sawzalls, fenders, a lot of power equipment that you use to make things. Also, too, there's machinery uh, from a manufacturing process side. And in the case of machinery, those items generally have consumables like drill bits and cutting wheels and grinding wheels that need to be managed. You have consumables and supplies. Those are things like safety glasses, gloves, or once again, in the case of a machine, drill bits, cutting wheels, other items like that. Also, two things have changed a lot, and a lot of IT equipment is sort of blended into the tools themselves, and a lot of the tools are actually computer-operated. So you not only get things like um, phones, tablets, but you also get computers these days that are very common in the world of tool management. So a tool can basically be anything that's used to make a worker productive. Tool tracking really isn't just about tools. It's about the process, making it more efficient, and that really begs the question, what are the benefits and why track tools? Essentially, it's speed, efficiency, and accuracy. We work with a lot of companies that start out small. They might be a small contractor, a small manufacturing company, and it's not that uncommon that they use, starting out, generally it's a clipboard or a whiteboard that's on the wall. As they get a little bit bigger, they use a spreadsheet to manage their tools, but as they get bigger yet, the clipboards and the spreadsheets really just don't work very well anymore. You need something that's more robust to manage them. Um, you need to maximize usage to reduce tool costs. When companies get busy, it's very common that if they're looking for a tool and they can't find it, the easiest thing to do is buy more. A good example is if a contractor's got a job starting on Monday, and they need five drills for that job, and they go back and take a look and they can't find those drills immediately, one of the easiest things to do is literally just buy five new drills, overnight them, ship them out to the job, when those drills might just be sitting there unused and they can't find them. So really, it's controlling costs. Also, too, you wanna to minimize downtime. Electricians, control engineers, plumbers, carpenters, crane operators, you name it, these are all highly compensated trades, and when they're not working, when they're waiting for a tool to be able to do something, it costs the company quite a bit of money. So you really need to understand profitability. Most companies that use tools understand their labor costs. They know how much they're paying somebody to be on the job. They know how many folks they've got on the job. They understand the material costs. They understand how much they paid for two by fours or other items that went, went into that particular job. But what they don't often really understand is tool usage on that job. And without tool usage, they don't really have an accurate profit picture for that particular job itself. Let me give you an example. If on a particular job, you're gonna use, and I'll make this simple, five ladders, five drills, 10 hammers. Those tools all have a cost involved and they all have a lifespan. It's very important to know that if 
All of those tools were on that job for a year, what their cost is. So if a drill is gonna last for a year, you basically depreciate those completely and you know what their costs are. If a ladder is gonna last for 10 years, you might take one tenth of the cost of that ladder and apply it to that particular job if it's a year long. So there are a lot of asset tracking solutions on the market, um, but we get the question all the time, what's the difference between asset tracking and tool tracking? Because there are a number of customers we work with that convert over to our solution that eventually, or that basically start out with asset tracking. So are the two of them different? And the answer is yes, they are actually quite a bit different. There are a number of additional features that you typically see in a tool tracking solution that you don't see in an asset tracking solution. Um, here are some of the basics. You generally track more details with a tool tracking solution than with an asset tracking solution. Asset tracking, it's very common that you'll use barcodes to manage that particular asset. In tool tracking, it is more common that you might use a barcode, but you also might use the company's internal asset number. You might use the serial number of the asset itself, like let's say the serial number that's on that drill. Or we're starting to get a number of companies that are also using RFID tags on the tools to manage them. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later, but RFID tags allow you to use something called a Geiger counter function so that you can actually zoom in on that particular tool on the job site if you can't find it. There's also more detail that can be stored in tool tracking than typically asset tracking. You might want certain parameters about different tools that are searchable. Um, for example, you might want to know that on this particular drill, it's this chuck size, it's this torque rating, or when you start moving into PC assets that are used on jobs, you might want to be able to characterize the operating system, how much memory, the last software patch. You need all of these items to be searchable in a good tool tracking solution. So typically tool tracking is a little more flexible. You can start with an on-premise solution and that is generally a solution that you purchase once, you install on a PC server, and you use that to check your tools in and out. And then sometimes you can segue in the future to a cloud-based solution when the need arises. So generally a tool tracking solution is more flexible because you can start out with one thing and move into something else as the need arises. Also, two tool tracking solutions are generally a lot more rugged. Even though a typical consumer grade cell phone or tablet can be used to track tools, most of the tool tracking solutions we see use industrial phones and tablets that are in the field and they're normally a better fit and they also come with a built-in barcode scanner, so you don't have to use your camera to scan those barcode tags. And many of them can be paired with RFID readers that are in the field. Also to in tool tracking, you generally manage maintenance and calibration. Um, if you're using asset tracking and you're tracking a desk, a chair, there's normally not much maintenance that has to be done on it. But in tool tracking, you have to maintain things just like you would with a car. There are things like safety inspections, repairing worn parts, calibration in the case of things like meters and test equipment. And in IT assets, you've got that same thing. So maintenance and calibration is an important part of a robust tool tracking solution and something that's important to a customer because you need to know if that item basically safe to check out and will it work well in the field and is it gonna cause a problem for me? So to net it out, asset tracking is typically handled inside of the building. Tool tracking might start inside the building, but it generally extends outside of the four walls into the field. So uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about tool tracking basics. Christy is gonna take you through some of the mechanics of how tool tracking works. Thank you, Arnie. My name is Christy and I am the sales lead here at GigaTrack and today I'm going to review um, the who, what, and why of tool tracking. So first I'm going to start with why tool tracking and why do you need it. The first step is identifying any um, problems that you may have. Where are the tools or assets? How many do you have? Would it be nice to know how much of value you have in your stock? 
or how much you have been losing due to lost or broken or missing items. Number two is implementing the tool tracking program. This starts with entering in or uploading all of your tool data. Tracking details such as serial numbers, values, depreciations, images, documentation, and even maintenance and repairs. Third step would be tagging your tools. Tagging the items with either a barcode or an RFID tag to improve the transaction speeds. Next step would be getting everyone on board, implementing, or implementing the tool tracking system company-wide and providing any training or support to the users. Last step would be managing the system. You're easily able to know where each of your items are at any given time. You can track and report on what is with an employee or at a location within seconds. Some of the key features. You're able to save both time and money by locating the tools when needed to complete a job faster. See where the item is, who has it, and any other details that could be helpful within just a few clicks. Checking in and out is a breeze. So once you have all of the information entered in, such as your employee information, your asset or tool information, you're able to check things in and out easily. Checking out is just scanning a barcode or badge that represents who or where the items are going to and then scan the item's barcode. Checking in process is simple too. You just simply scan the barcode and it will tell you where those items are coming back from and where to put them back correctly. With a tool tracking system, you're also able to stay ahead of the um, tracking preventative maintenance. The maintenance is set up per the type of tool, and this can be an included and not limited to calibrations, safety inspections, and general repairs. Who? Who's using the tool tracking system? Due to the flexibility, everyone is able to use a tool tracking program. Whether you're a small but growing company, uh, all the way up to a large Fortune 500 corporation. We also support federal, state, and local government agencies and are a provider to numerous educational institutions. I'm now gonna talk about one of our longtime customers, Res America. Res America is one of the world's largest independent renewable energy companies. As a longtime customer, I thought that they would be a perfect example of a company that struggled greatly prior to implementing a tool tracking system. From lost and broken tools to not knowing the whereabouts of specific items needed, they were spending tens of thousands of dollars per year on unnecessary purchases. Res started using our self-hosted self software years ago to track the whereabouts, maintenance on all of their tooling and safety equipment. As they grew, our system was able to grow with them. REST started by implementing our tool tracking system in just one of their locations, and over time they were able to push out the implementation company-wide and get a comprehensive view of all of their tools. Through the tool tracking system, they were able to find at a moment's notice without spending, <clears throat> spending a costly resources searching for the tools or items needed. New tool purchases were cut nearly in half, and the system was able to pay for itself within the first year. Tools used on windmills are very expensive and critical that they are functioning properly. So safety is one of the Res America's top priorities. One of the main features that Res uh, focuses on is the upcoming preventative maintenance schedules, safety inspections, and what tools are OSHA certified or not. This cuts down uh, this cuts downtime to a minimum by repairing the tools on time before they become decommissioned. Platforms that can be used. Track anything, anywhere with using multiple platforms, both stationary or mobile. You can get the full version of the program for tool tracking on a, um, a laptop or desktop. You can track on the go with GigaTrack TTS mobile application. This is a downloadable app for both Android or iOS devices. And this app can run either in live database mode or in batch mode, meaning offline. When you're using the item on uh, batch mode, it will save the tra transactions and you can sync once you hit Wi-Fi. This is really helpful for um, being out in the field in those remote areas. You can also use industrial hardware options that could be provided by Barcodes Inc. This leads into implementation. So we offer a self-hosted and a cloud version of the software. 
The system functions are the same. The only difference is who's hosting it, us or you. Freeze up some IT resources. After purchase, you do receive an, an over the web training session. The training session is an in-depth walkthrough with a software expert that teaches you and your main admin person or team system logic, setup, how to use the program, best practices, and implementation. An another way um, or another question is, how are you going to be getting the information into the system? Do you want to use imports or do manu manual data entry? If you already are using spreadsheets to track your tools, you're a step ahead. We do offer many different import options to upload your information quickly. Another part of implementation and planning is what label technology would you like to use? Barcodes or RFID? Arnie is going to take it from here and explain some of the different options and differences. Arnie? Thanks, Christy. We want to talk specifically a little bit about barcode and RFID because it's a question that comes up a lot. There are pros and cons for each. So what I'm going to do first is just go over a quick comparison of each, and then we're going to talk about how they actually both work in the field. Barcodes, everybody's pretty familiar with them. You see them on products you purchase. They're scanned at stores. Fairly common. RFID tags are generally a computer chip with an antenna built into it. Sometimes they actually look like a barcode. They might have a barcode printed on it, but they're able to be scanned with outline of sight. So in the case of a barcode, I need to see the barcode. I aim at it with my scanner. I scan, it reads it. In the case of RFID, because it's a radio frequency identification tag, I can pull the trigger. It'll send out radio waves that detect that particular tag. That particular tag sends back uh, basically a response that says, hey, I'm here and here's what I'm saying. So in the case of barcode, it's line of sight. RFID, generally no line of sight needed, so I can read around corners, I can read behind things without having to physically see that asset. In the case of barcodes, I scan and generally it's one tag at a time. That's all I can really read. Whereas in the case of RFID, if I have five items or five tools out on the counter and they each have an RFID chip on them, when I pull that trigger, it will go and discover all five of those and read all five at the same time. Okay, in the case of barcodes, if I scan it and it reads it, I basically got what I wanted. I want to check out that drill to a job. I scan the barcode on it, read it, good to go. The one thing in the case of RFID is sometimes when I scan, I might get more than I wanted. So say, for example, I just wanted to check in or check out that particular drill that happens to have an RFID tag on it. And let's say there are three or four other items with RFID tags that are close to it. When I pull the trigger, it will probably not only read that drill, but it'll also read the other item, which means I have to go through the extra labor in that particular case of saying, this is the item I want not the other five. Barcodes are normally less secure than an RFID tag. Reason is I can take a barcode and I can photocopy it. In the case of an RFID tag, can't do it. And also barcodes are less expensive. You can normally print your own asset tags in the case of a barcode that's industrial that might go on a tool itself. Generally, that particular tag is gonna cost you a little more money and you have to have it pre-printed. Um, okay, I think we got a little lost here, so. Yep, just one yeah. moment, Arnie, sorry. Okay, no problem. Hey, there we go. Okay, we talked a little bit about barcodes and the fact that you can print them yourself. Generally, if you buy, let's say, an industrial barcode tag that might go on a tool, the cost might be somewhere between 25 cents to 50 cents for that particular asset. And it all depends on size and the quantity you buy. RFID tags in quantity are generally at least 50 cents and really good robust tags can cost anywhere from a dollar to five dollars depending on size and the read range. So they are more costly than a barcode tag. In the case of barcode tags, 
I can take them, peel off the sticker on the back, paste it on something, and I'm basically good to go. It's ready to use. In RFID, because it's radio frequency, I need to do a little bit more work to make sure I'm going to get a reliable result. So normally I need to find a tag that's going to be a good fit. I need to test, validate, and then document how that tag should be installed on that particular tool. So for example, RFID is affected by metal. If I put a barcode tag on metal, not a problem. If I put an RFID tag on say a metal tool like a drill or that, I have to be aware of where it can be mounted and where it's gonna read the best. Um, we have something that's sometimes called the Geiger counter function or we call it the Sherlock Holmes function. In the case of RFID tags, I can discover tags or discover assets that are out there that are tagged just by basically taking that RFID reader and putting it in a Geiger counter or Sherlock Holmes mode, walking around, and the closer I get to that particular tool, the louder it's gonna beep. It's gonna basically let me know that I'm getting closer and closer and closer. So RFID is a phenomenal tool in discovering things on a job site that might be misplaced or lost or even in a warehouse that I can't easily find. Barcodes, I don't have any Sherlock Holmes mode. If I can't see it, I'm basically stuck. So we get asked a lot, what's better really, barcodes or RFID? The bulk of the customers that we have will start out with barcodes. Barcodes work very well for most applications. We do have some customers because the costs are coming down on RFID, implementing basic RFID to do a couple things. And generally the tags they put on will be a RFID tag that also has a barcode on it. So if they wanna check that tool out or check it back in, they might scan the barcode on it. If they wanna find that tool on a job site, they'll use the RFID function. Or sometimes, for example, if a job completes, um, one of the folks out in the field comes back, they take all the equipment that's in their truck, they dump it on the dock, RFID can be very useful for reading all of those tags at the same time. So there are some compelling reasons for both, but like I said, most of the customers that we have start with barcode first, and then if it makes sense, they'll add RFID. I have never seen anybody do just RFID by itself. Normally it's a mix of both. So how can I decide? The best thing to do is really work with us and barcodes to come up with a use case to figure out what makes the most sense for you. And like I said, you can always start with barcodes and add RFID later. Okay, we're gonna talk a little bit about total cost of ownership and ROI. Uh, we get asked this a lot, what is total cost of ownership? And the way we look at it on a tool tracking system is it's generally, what are my costs for that year for purchasing the system, maintaining the system, and installing the system for a 12 month period of time? A company wants to be able to calculate that to understand what their annual total cost of ownership is. Then generally, I would wanna know what the ROI on the solution is gonna be because if the ROI is three years, five years, it obviously doesn't make any sense. The things that we look at that really help the return on investment where you save money is the first one is tool room labor savings. One of the first companies I ever worked with, I wanted to meet their tool room person and that's the person that managed all of the tools that were in that particular supply room and got them out to the jobs at the right time and when I got there that person was on the phone and the reason that person was on the phone is somebody in the field had called and said I need something called a bender out on this job on Monday. A bender happens to be a $5,000 mechanical tool that's used to bend pipe or conduit that you run wires through on a, on a particular you know, job. It's an electrical piece. And I listened to that person and they, turns out, had no benders in their warehouse. A uh, guy told me they had five of them typically. They didn't keep a lot of them, like drills, for example, because it's a $5,000 item. You can't have a million of these in stock. It just costs too much. So that person spent the next basically four hours calling all the job sites, talking to foremen on those job sites, asking them if they had a bender and if they could give that bender up. So I asked that person, I said, well, how much of your day do you typically spend chasing tools? 
And the person told me, hey, sometimes I spend two to four hours a day chasing tools. So by knowing where those tools are at, you can have a very large tool room labor savings because that person isn't spending all their time hunting for something. Also, tool, Christy talked a little bit about equipment loss. You get items in the field that sometimes get lost. You have items in your shop that sometimes appear to be lost. Items that are checked out to people that appear to be lost. When I can't find something, one of the most common things is just to rebuy it. It costs a lot of money, and if I know where all of my items are and I can pull them back and better utilize them, I save quite a bit of money on lost equipment. Also, too, if I'm missing something, I can't find it. There are times that contractors very typically rent things for a short period of time. That adds to the cost. Also, too, companies end up with things that they believe are stolen on job sites. That creates insurance claims that take time. And one of the most important pieces is, once again, if I've got somebody out in the field that's working and they don't have the right item at that time, they're sitting idle and you're paying for them. So there are field labor savings. When you roll all of this up, management can make much better business decisions if they understand what their tool costs are, what the utilization is, how many tools they lost on a particular job. So when you take all of those savings and you compare them to an annual cost of ownership, you get an ROI. In our particular case, we have a nice little sheet and we did a seminar. It was a uh, tool seminar for a number of contractors a little less than a year ago and we had them all fill out the ROI sheet. We had them plug numbers in and we asked them to be a little unoptimistic. And the interesting thing is when they got done doing that, it spit out a number at the bottom that told them what their typical ROI was. And the average we had for that seminar was 43 days. That's extremely quick. Okay. Um, we're going to talk just briefly about why GigaTrack and Barcode Zinc. Um, honestly, some people know asset tracking systems. We know that, but we're experts on tools. Our first solution went in in, an, in a nuclear power plant in the early 90s. Since then, we've installed a little over 1,000 tool tracking solutions. So we understand this really well. We've seen it all. In combination with Barcode Zinc, who really is a subject matter expert on the industrial handheld that would use that fit best, the correct tag to go on that tool, the RFID tag that's gonna work the best in the field. When you put the both of us together, we really can provide a great end-to-end -end solution. Uh, the solutions we have are very flexible. We can deliver the exact solution you need to track your needs, and you can take that solution, start off small, and you can grow with it down the line. You can start with an on-premise, as Christy mentioned, and eventually move to cloud, start with barcodes, move to RFID. The products that we have really aren't static. We don't produce a solution that stays the same. We listen to the customers and we make sure that we add features, functionality, and flexibility that we really need as time goes on. Also too, you really want one throat to choke on this. We offer a complete solution with barcodes, including the software, the hardware, the tags, the training, the ongoing support, and the enhancements that you need. Um, our solutions generally are installed and used to a high degree. It's not uncommon in the computer world that only about 40% of the software solutions that are purchased are actually used in the field. And they don't get installed sometimes for a number of reasons. What we find is the customers really like our solutions, they're easy to use, and one year after purchase, over 80% of the people that purchase are using our solution successfully, and that continues down the line. So with that, I wanted to thank you for your time and turn things back to Lorna for questions. All right, thank you, Arnie. Thank you, Christy. Um, I did see a couple questions um, come in. I think we'll probably only have time for one, and then we'll reach back out to those individuals specifically. Um, one question that came in, um, how does the tool tracking licensing work? Thank you, that's a really great question. So as um, in the presentation, we did review that we have a self-hosted and a cloud-based program. Um, with those programs, it is uh, the users and the licenses are broken into two different parts. You have your full version of the program, which is a PC or a desktop. Those licenses are based on concurrent users. 
Concurrent users means we don't limit how many computers it's installed on or how many people have username and passwords. It's how many people are logged in at the same exact time. On the mobile side of things, so Android or iOS devices, that would be uh, the licensing is per registered device. So pretty much who needs to have it on their phone and active. Okay. And I just see another one come in. Uh, what is the best method um, slash tool for etching a barcode, serial numbers, uh, 1D or 2D on metal tools um, or dies? Arnie? Yeah, there's uh, actually a number of different ways to do it. There are laser etching equipment that's available that can etch or what's called direct parts mark and identification on a particular tool. Um, some large customers we have actually go and they purchase their own laser etchers to mark those. We also have smaller customers that don't want to really incur the expense of buying that laser etcher and what they'll do is they'll send their tools out to be marked. So those are the two typical ways we see that done. Awesome. Thank you, Arnie. Um, all right. Well, I guess we're out of time here, but just thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. Um, please reach out if you guys have any questions at lmaliabarcodesinc.com, um, or also feel free to give me a call at 855-253-5508, and we will follow up with everybody um, on a few other questions that um, people have asked. Thank you so much.